at YouTube. So I'm going to build a Ryzen Threadripper build. Um, I've taken everything out already and built it because we had issues with one of the boards when we started filming before. Um, so I've also changed the board. I've gone with a, a Ryzen Threadripper, uh, sorry, uh, Ace Rocks, Ace Rock um, X99 Tai Chi motherboard. Um, the reason I went with this is because I'm using it for a workstation and it comes with two network ports, so they're two one gigabit LAN ports from Intel, uh, AC Wi-Fi, uh, it comes with USB Gen, um, USB 3.1 Gen 2, so 10 gigabit per second ports, C and Type A port, uh, and then you've also got USB 3.1 or 3, uh, 3.1 Gen 1, so your old USB 3 ports, so uh, another four of them, uh, BIOS reset for the, at the back, and also SPDIF out, which is an optical out and normal analog audio out at the back. But importantly, internally, which is the reason I didn't go, well, which is why I went Threadripper over going with a 12 core so a third gen Ryzen, is we've got uh, eight um, memory slots, which are in quad channel. Uh, you've also got four PCI Express 16 time slots. They don't all run at 16 time slot. If you've got all eight in there, I believe it's run at eight, 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 eight. So, but if you want, you can run two 16s at full speed, which is quite impressive. Uh, you've also got M, uh, three M.2 slots on here, uh, which is storage wise is quite important for me because I'm running VMs on here because it's workstation usage. Uh, you've also got, when you're looking at this, um, a nice sort of aesthetic to go with it as well I mean I don't think it makes a huge difference but it does look nice to look at so we'll peel the plastic off does that nice sort of plastic feel feeling um, anyway uh, we also got diagn I'll flip it around so it help you guys we've got diagnostics um, so it'll, it gives you a readout if there's an issue uh, you got a USB 3 um, from panel header um, you also got this is where you would put your um, front panel uh, IO uh, sorry front panel stuff so uh, switch LED so on you've also got onboard power and reset buttons this is a PCI Express power connector if you use all four lanes because it needs external power to power those lanes each lane gets 75 watts by default um, so that's where that power is giving it uh, you've also got your old USB 2 um, I don't know what that is. Oh, clear BIOS setting. Um, you've also got a couple of other things here. So this looks like a trusted platform module. That you could plug in a fan, um, RGB LED header. So you can plug in uh, RGB LEDs, control it from the motherboard itself. Um, this, this is actually quite cool as well. You've got HD audio headers, but two of them. Uh, one's on its side for those scenarios where you can actually just pull it in on the side and make it out of the way, which is quite nice, or come in from the top. So that's actually quite a nice way of doing it. Both, you can't, you can't even use both at once, they're both the same header, just sideways. Uh, you got your M, uh, you've also got your PCI Express Gen, uh, Gen 3 or 2 one time slot, um, just for if you want a sound card or something small. Um, you've, this is the advantage of having Threadripper, you've got 64 PCI Express lanes that can go in all different directions, so whether it's storage, graphics, um, this is a, a scalable interface, um, memory, which is what I'm showing here, you can just keep going. Well, you can't do that on the normal um, Ryzen boards, you've got four slots normally, you've only got 24 lanes by default, I think it is. Um, so four for storage and 16 for your normal slot or eight if you're over two for example. You've also got things like on this one, so I'll go over again, um, SATA, we've got eight SATA ports which is a lot more rare on the standard Ryzen boards because obviously you've got bandwidth issues if you start having too many SATA ports. Um, they go into a controller but clearly this controller can take it. You've got a U.2 connector for running really high speed NVMe storage. So again, another workstation requirement. Um, and I've also, you've got um, unbelievable amount of fan headers everywhere. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. That's it system as well? No, so you, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> 
decent board and uh, that's, this is one reason I went with this. We had an Asus one before but we just uh, I kept having issues so we sent it back and uh, we've now gone with um, the Asrock one which give, gives you a bit more speech, it's about 20 quid more so it's about 300, um, I think this is about 300 when we pay for it, 320 and the Asus one was about um, three, uh, 270, 280, something like that in the UK pounds. So yeah, so what we'll start doing now is we'll start putting the CPU in. Okay, so for the CPU, uh, this is about £320 in the UK. It's a 12-core Ryzen um, 92, uh, sorry, 29, tw uh, 2920X. So it's a 12-core 24 thread CPU. So it's got four little dies in there, so um, very powerful chip. Um, the most important thing is the lanes that it gives you, so it's not just a 12 core chip, you've obviously got those 64 lanes, which makes it more relevant to, fret, uh, not to gaming, but to workstation usage. So I've got um, uh, four sticks of DDR3 uh, 1300, uh, sorry, 3000 megahertz RAM, DDR4 uh, 3000 megahertz RAM, and I'm going to be putting it in quad channel. Uh, I've used Vengeance before from Corsair, which is the low profile version, and it's, it's fine memory, it's fine. Uh, cast latency on this model is, uh, where it was, 16, 20, 20, and 38. Uh, there is a faster one, there was a 15, I believe, as well. But value for money is just offering capacity, is what, which is what I really need, um, over necessarily raw performance. Excuse me, sir. Yes. How much RAM can this board take? Uh, so, I believe off the top of my head it's 128. Is it the same as the other one with uh, more non-ECC? So, the non-ECC, it can go up to 128. ECC, it probably can go up to 2 terabytes or something. Because Ooh. ECC DIMMs can go 64, 64, so it's 128, 256, 512, easily. Knowledge. But you need to check it because certain boards don't support ECC. I think this one does, because right. Um, but you need to double check it. I know the CPU memory controller's in the CPU, but it doesn't always, it's not always supported by the manufacturers of the board, so you need to check. It'll okay. be on the vendor's list. It'll be on the vendor's list. So uh, for boot drive, I'm using a 250, gig, uh, 250 gigabyte um, NVMe Western Digital Blue Drive, so there's the model number, you'll be able to see it. Um, I got this Black Friday for I think something like 20 pounds or something ridiculous. No way. Yeah. So uh, this is my boot drive. I don't need anything more than 250 gig for my boot drive. Um, I've got a very, very fast uh, 1.6 terabyte SSD, which is where my VMs are gonna be booting off of. And I've got slower, um, crucial SATA SSDs for running additional stuff and storage. I've got network drives. Yeah, so uh, for the case, I went with a Corsair Carbide uh, Spec 06 um, case. It comes with a glass side panel, which I've taken off. A uh, tempered glass side panel, this is the, that model. There is one with a plain door and also a plastic door, but obviously glass has that sort of niche effect. It doesn't scratch as much as acrylic does. So I love that. I also love the fact that the shroud allows the power to come through, hides all the cables. Um, little gap there for the HD or uh, high definition audio to go in. Uh, it's pre-applied standoffs. And there's the little one in the middle that allows you to rest the uh, motherboard in place as you're screwing around it. So you're not mucking around with trying to line it up. Uh, last there. So, ATX is all the way around, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This motherboard is, a, uh, I believe, ex oh, no, it is ATX, the last one was extended ATX, um, which is a bit longer, it goes over that as well. Um, so, uh, micro ATX goes to about there, so you'd have to use these ones, and then ITX goes literally to those four. So if you wanted to put the following um, uh, thing, um, motherboards in, in, you could as well. So the other thing is if you look at the front, you uh, by default it comes with two fans, uh, which are not particularly special, but they're Corsair fans, um, standard for stuff. Um, you've got an air filter at the front, which is removable to wash, uh, air filter for the fans. Uh, you can add another two, so three in total, 120mm fans at the front, 
it looks like you can do 140s as well because it's got grooves for that as well and down the sides maybe uh, may it's three you'd have to check maybe it's two only two for 140s but I, like, I do like the fact that you can definitely put more than uh, one fan in the front on it uh, three looks really nice if we look at the top as well uh, this especially when you think about radiators and stuff like that you can put three in the top as well three 120 mil fans it actually looks like it's not three two sorry two 120 mil two 120 mil fans or you're looking at one 140 at the top because there's the grooves for it okay and then back the back we've got uh, a 120 mil fan again um, for exhaust which is where we're going to take the CPU heat out of the back um, if we flip it over uh, right, if we look at the top, there's a light that goes all the way down there, which is obviously like the Nike tick. It's always the coolest thing. It runs off this little SATA power connector. Um, and I've got LED lights to go in here as well. And it also projects down at the bottom, which you always got to look and love. Um, so again, don't remove a magnetic dust filter, comes off. Um, oh, neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, same, with the graph, um, same with the bottom. It's just a sliding one for the power supply, so the power supply takes its own heat. Uh, it takes its own air, so it isn't stealing. Um, at the back, you've got uh, where you can run all your cable management. You can put a by screwing an SSD into there and there. And these are SSD or two and a half inch, I should say, because you can do hard drives as well. Slot in, lock into place, removable SSD storage space, which are quite nice. Um, so I've got my two SSDs that are sat in here, which I was using from before. So there's my VM drive and so on. Um, and I can add later drives here, which I'm planning to do. And also you've got two and a half inch drive base here for your bigger drives, two of them, which are quick release again. Um, and then this is where we're gonna put my power supply that I've got for the model. So, so this is power supply I use in almost all my builds. It's about 40 pounds. Um, uh, apart from my main build at home. Uh, it's an EVGA 600 watt um, bronze power supply. Um, value for money wise is really good. Um, it's got a single rail um, for the 12 volt and you're getting 49 amps on your 12 volt rail so you can power anything up to 1080 Ti, um, 20, uh, RTX 2080, stuff like that. Really powerful graphics cards off of this. So expandability is quite good or very low power um, with lots of drives, which is what I've got. So high power CPU with a lower power GPU and loads of drives, which is what I'm doing. So 600 is more than plenty for what I'm using it for. CPU has got a TDP of about 180. So, I mean, with board and everything, you're getting into about 250, 200. So there's quite a lot of headroom because the GPU is only about 120 as well. So future proofing it, adding more storage, adding another graphics card, which I'm not really gonna do anyway, but adding more storage, more RAM, it's scalable. And that's what I like about this, for 40 quid, it's a solid bit of kit. The only difficult, uh, the only annoying bit is obviously you get a lot of cables, it's not modular, but I think it's not a bad compromise, especially when you've got cases where you can just hide them around the back. So this is the Asus uh, RX584 gig model. I've gone, it was called Dual, I think. Uh, it's got two dual fans, funny enough. Um, it's a very simple model. Um, all I need is something that can do video encoding and run three monitors, which is what I use on my desk, uh, and the possibility to move to 4K in future. So something like this is more than adequate for Premiere Pro. I can use OpenGL encoding. It's more than adequate to do what I need it to do. So CPU power and memory is more important than the graphics card, but for 100 quid, I feel this is a really good bargain. It also allows me to do uh, games if I want to, but obviously I'm working. I would never do such a thing at work. So if I do want to load Minecraft up or play World of Tanks or play Call of Duty, which I can't have on my work computer, I would never use it. Thank you. So what I'm going to do now... Coming on your holiday, it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I could stay at home. Right, anyway, um, so you've got two display on the back, sort of I.O. for the, the device, um, graphics card. The reason I like this is it's got two uh, DisplayPort 1.4s which is 8K output and you've also got two HDMI 2.0s which gives you 4K 
uh, 60 frames output from both ports and then it's just a standard dual uh, DVI um, out which is uh, up to two and a half K, really old monitor output. But you can run four, uh, you can run all five at once on AMD cards because of how it's, how it's set up. So you could have five displays out of this card, which is really impressive as well. Four gig memory buffer. It was another 20 quid for A. It really wasn't going to make a huge difference. For, I mean, maybe a little bit in video editing and stuff. But again, it's not what I primarily lose it for. I use this for video and compute. Um, uh, for sort of video and compute uh, for, for virtual machines and stuff, which it wouldn't usually benefit. All right, so this is a, a Samsung NVMe 8 times SSD drive. Uh, so PCI Express Gen 3, not Gen 4, 8 times uh, 1.86 terabyte SSD. And the advantage of this is it runs at 8 times PCI Express, so it has a maximum throughput of uh, 5,500 megabytes a second read and about 4,000 write. So it's, it's literally double the speed of any two M.2 drives. It's combined into this and it's a huge capacity. So this is where I'm going to be running my VMs off of. So I can have loads of them running at once, testing scenarios, and I'm going to have no issue with uh, I.O. at all. It's got really fast speed. And if I want to use slower drives to attach to the VMs, I can use the other drives for that. But this is going to be the primary boot drive on all of the VMs I'm running. So uh, yeah, uh, if you want to know, the model number is P, uh, MZ-PLL1T6B, if you want to Google that. There's probably a newer model of it now, but uh, I mean Gen 4 and so on, which would be even quicker. But for what, it, it, what I use it for, this is really quick, and I, I, it was about 400 quid. So value-wise, it's actually pretty good. Um, and it's built for enterprise class, so the reliability is even better and there's also monitoring from the back.